Let's look at an example of how this is constructed, how a simple case can be constructed. Yeah. As always, I rely on my double integrator example. Yeah. I am going to look at a control problem by the way, although we were looking at this. I am going to do a control problem. Yeah. Does not matter. You can, I mean, the notions are same. Okay. So, this is the control problem. I want to do stabilization. Yeah. So, I want to go to x1, x2. That is my target, yeah, that is an equilibrium, so I can always target to go there and I want to make sure that want x1 less than equal to 5 and x2 less than equal to 3, okay. Uh, is this a good enough or x2 say greater than equal to minus 3, okay. I am trying to see if this is a good specification or not, not too nice I guess. Yeah, I will just say yeah, let us just do this, okay. We will just try this, I have no idea how it goes, we will see, okay, alright. So great, great, great. So, I want this, okay, in the transient. So, I, of course, I will give x1 0, x2 0. I would like to start within, of course, does not make sense for me to start outside. So, I will start within this set, which is say, you know, uh, x1 I will take as 4 and x2 as, you know, minus 2, okay. Not that this matters, but we will do that, right. Now, uh, how have we, how have, would I design a control for this system, anybody? How would I design a control or a Lyapunov of candidate or a CLF for this? What would be a good Lyapunov function? Okay. You said x1 square plus x2 square, some said backstepping. Chalo, in this case, let us start with x1 square plus x2 square. See what happens. It is not a strict Lyapunov function. You all understand that. Uh, but let us start and see. So, this is of course positive definite and all that candidate Lyapunov function, all the nice things. Uh, if I took v dot, I will get x1, x2 plus x2 times u, and I would basically choose control as what? What would be a good control here? Minus x1 minus x2. Fair enough. Yeah, because I will get v dot as minus x2 square, negative semi definite only. And then of course, I will try LaSalle and it will work out, yeah, it will be a stabilizing control, okay. Uh, not a strictly up no function, let us see if we land in trouble because of that, unclear, but we will try. Hmm? Now, as, as you can imagine, this is not necessarily going to keep me inside this set. Yeah? I did not, uh, no guarantees. I mean, if I simulate it for different initial conditions, maybe um, suppose I start with, uh, I change the initial condition to the boundary pretty much, 5 comma 3, that is the boundary. What will happen? I will get a control which is negative, but that is fine, that is fine. Um, because I will get u as minus 8 units and that is fine. No, that is not what I want. Uh, I want to be on the boundary of this guy and I want to be, give it a positive. So, I want to have minus 4. I am just playing so that it does not, it, it ex gets out somehow at this boundary, okay. What am I trying? I am just, you, you un I think you understand what I am trying. So, this is where I start suppose, this is well within the set, right. I started within the set, no problem. What is the control at this point? 
u0 is what? It's 4 minus 3 equal to plus 1, okay, at that instant, right. So, it's a positive value, right. So, I got x2 dot is is a positive number, right. I am already on the boundary of x2, right. So, I am going to get out, okay. I just just worked hard to get a case which will happen, okay. So, basically it is obvious, right. I mean I did not really work or try to do anything to uh, make sure that it remains inside the set. So, obviously I did not use it to do any designs, so obviously you cannot expect that anything good will come out of it. I mean you will get out of the set, okay? even if you start in the set. So, this is in the set, way I have defined it, okay. So, yeah. So, sure I escaped, I can get out of the set, okay. So, that is the basic point. Um, will not stop set escape as is obvious because we worked we did not do anything to actually help stop it. What I will do is I will modify this v now yeah x 1 squared over x 1 square minus 25 plus x 2 square Okay, all right. Very ugly looking, weird looking thing. Yeah, and this is what is called a reciprocal barrier function. Okay, we've done some reciprocal construction. So, what what exactly is happening here? Let's see. Uh, uh, if if did I actually get this correct, or should I have flipped the sign? I should have flipped the sign. No, this is not correct. Correct. So, now whenever x2 is within plus minus 3, right, the way I sort, then this is positive, right. Again, x1 is within plus minus 5, this is positive, right. So, this is positive definite in this region, huh? In uh, let me call this region C, in the set C, okay, which is this x1 within plus minus, it is a square region, right, x1 within plus minus 5, x2 between plus minus 3, okay. It is positive in C, okay. What else, what else happens? Uh, positive, uh, I would say actually in uh, C0 or, or uh, interior of C. Do you understand the notion of interior of a set? Everything but the boundary. In this case, plus minus 5, plus minus 3 is the boundary, everything inside is the, so basically if I change the inequality to the, to a strict inequality here, right here, if these become strict inequalities, that is the interior of the set. Hmm? So, in the interior of the set, this is positive definite, behaves exactly like your standard Lyapunov function, no problem, okay. What happens at the boundary? Blows up, goes to infinity, right. So, goes to infinity at delta c, delta c is the notation for the boundary or okay, weird function, hmm? weird ugly, okay. So, can't deny that it is not nice looking, all right, great. Now, I am going to do standard whatever I do Lyapunov like analysis with this function now, yeah, because I know that inside once I am, as long as I am in the interior, things are okay, yeah. Notice that this was not, um, this is the interior by the way, huh? this is interior point. This is the boundary, right? Because it's a square, right? So this is the boundary. Fine, that's okay. That's not a worry. I could have done this with 2.999999 and proven the same thing. Yeah. So I could have proven this with the interior point also. Not a big deal. Yeah. Let's not worry about that. Okay. I start with this. How do I do the analysis? Take a v dot. Okay. Do the uh, painful process of taking derivatives. Huh? Okay. Can somebody help me now? First, I have x1 x1 dot divided by 25 minus x1 squared, that is the first good piece. Then I take the derivative of the denominator, right. What is it?
¿Ya? ¿Ok? All right, big mess, whatever that is. Huh? I don't know, I'm trying if this will work or not, but okay. Then I do the second term, x2, x2 dot divided by 9 minus x2 squared, right, plus or minus again x2 squared divided by uh, times x2, x2 dot, uh, this will become plus divided by 9 minus x2 squared whole square actually. Yes? Yeah? Whatever this mess is. Okay? Alright. So, I substitute for the I substitute for the derivatives. Yeah? So, this is x1 x2 minus x1 cubed x2 divided by 25 minus x1 squared divided by 25 minus x1 squared whole squared. So, this will become a plus. Yeah? I am just doing the computation here and just substitute for the derivatives. Right? Plus, I will take the x2 dot common because that is the control. So, I will get x2 divided by 9 minus x2 squared plus x2 cube divided by 9 minus x2 square whole squared times the control. Okay? Yeah? So, this is if I take, if I sort of actually sum them up. So, I will get uh, 9 x 2 minus x 2 cubed plus x 2 cubed divided by 9 minus x 2 squared times u. Yeah? So, this Okay, yeah, thank you. First term is x1, x2, not x2 squared, I agree. Second term is fine, I think. Fine, no? Hmm. Bolo? Say that again. I did, no? Where else? Ah, here now, last step. Correct. Similarly, this guy will reduce to 25 minus x1 squared whole squared and you will get 25 x1 x2. Yeah? Is that clear? What? Not clear? Just addition subtraction, nothing much. Huh? Okay? Alright? Whatever, messy but it is okay. Huh? Now, the, what is the good thing that happened in the control? This is the denominator, right? So it will go up, right? So now what what should I specify my control as? Can somebody tell me? Choice of control now. You can, I'm sure you can. Please tell me. What is the control? I, I just try to cancel this guy, you no, know, first for the first term. And I'll just try to cancel the first term. Okay. So what is it? Minus 9 minus x2 square whole squared divided by 9 and right, because that will leave x2 out here then I will take uh, I want to get 25 x1 out here divided by 25 minus x1 squared whole squared okay whatever this mess is it is something yeah it's a big mess yeah and this is going to basically cancel this guy correct and then I will take minus k x2 whatever I do not care yeah because it will give me negative definite term here right give me nice negative definite term here okay. So, this this will leave me with v dot as minus k x2 squared sorry I will make my life simple and probably Multiply, I am going to do that, yeah. I will make my life simple. I did not need to do it, but okay. Yeah. This, huh? This gives me what? I mean, I will just go Babalat's lemma out. It will go x2 gives me 0, x2 going to be 0, x2 dot going to be 0. 
okay x2 dot going to be 0 implies control going to be 0 because x2 dot is the control right control going to be 0 so I have to just check this guy yeah in here I have already proved x2 is going to 0 right so this term is 0 only left with this guy yeah only left with this the only way this can go to 0 is if x1 goes to 0 yeah because because x2 is already gone to 0 so this guy is not contribute it's positive term right x2 is already 0 so this is yeah positive term so this is just a constant this is not obviously this going cannot go to infinity don't want it to go to infinity makes no sense right so this is basically x1 has to go to 0 right? so from this I can prove that x1 is also going to go to 0 right but even if before I prove any of this notice before I even went to this step I already proved this forget all of this mess to prove everything goes to 0 I've already proved that v dot is negative semi definite which means what which means v of x of t is less than equal to v of x of t 0 right now notice whatever initial condition you started with was inside right so x t 0 belongs to c right or c interior yeah i'm going to say c interior so you you started in the interior of the set right of this set i started in the interior of this set c okay so obviously you can see from my v construction that in the interior it is nice positive definite function and end a finite value most importantly yeah if x1 and x2 are in the interior of c are in c0 c0 uh, then this is a finite value right at initial time yeah so therefore at future time also it is finite value correct so that's the argument xt0 in c0 implies v x t0 is finite and this implies v of x of t is finite implies x of t does not belong to the boundary that is you will never hit the boundary yeah because you started at a finite value of v you prove that v dot is less than or equal to 0 therefore v always remains finite huh? and the only way for v to become infinite is you are at the boundary okay there is no question of going beyond beyond so there is no question okay so you see by making this small change in the v of course i chose a different complicated control also corresponding to the v this is the lyapunov redesign but I was able to ensure that the uh, trajectories remain inside the set and you can verify in this case you will never you can try all these tricks that I tried but you will never get out of the set okay so this gave me a safe control this is what is called a safe control right when you remained inside a set that you desired it's a set C right but also notice that yeah, as you get to the boundary the control here that you see right also does bad things control will also explode at least on one boundary if not on the other okay so so of course you are never going to go to the boundary you've already proved it but the point is if you started close to the boundary of the set okay you started at 4.99 so you can see the denominator here in the first term of control is very small then control is big huh? so if you start closer and closer to the boundary you are required to exert more very very large values of control yes you can this may also be somehow intuitive to you you are saying that i am already working at the corner of my operating region so i have to work really hard to push it back inside might make intuitive sense right right if you you know you if you if you are you know if you are sort of working you know at the edge and you want to push it inside as fast as possible as quickly as possible but this is not always required okay the system dynamics may be such that for example right that you are naturally going back for example if i think i mean this is one of the nice example if you think a pendulum 
think a pendulum and suppose i don't want the pendulum to go out of this by doing my control at the my control is at the tip i don't i don't want it to go out here okay at this edge right so at but when i come here notice this control my barrier this kind of reciprocal function based control will push it really hard back really back really hard but think about the dynamics of the system if i actually started here at the boundary i have to do zero nothing i have to do nothing because gravity will push it down right but my control is agnostic to that it's going to really give it a real go here and it will probably hit at the other edge yeah? but the fact is the dynamics is such that i didn't have to it falls no i don't have to do anything it's a, it, at the edge it falls i don't have to work so these are not the best choice of barrier functions so that's what we will see how to sort of create better barrier functions okay